Hi, Asa. Um, I'm gonna, I just sent a document to print. If you could bring that to me, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Hi, Elise. Did you have trouble uh, getting connected to the meeting today? No, I had. I I did not. I did not get the reminder this morning, but I got. I went back and I found it. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I don't know what happened with the reminder and um, uh, yeah. Myra uh, said that she uh, did not see the link. So I just sent, sent it to her. So hopefully, and Great. Jim is not able to attend. So uh, yeah, I mean, no, Myra's I had trouble getting in before. Yeah. Right. So I am going to mute myself and just resend the uh, invite to everyone. Okay, I'm going to mute myself too. So I went into Zoom to see if I could resend the invite. Um, and it oh does not allow me to, but here's Myra. So okay, that was tricky. <laughs> It's always an adventure getting into this meeting. Oh, I know. Well, <laughs> I'm I'm wondering. Um, Elise said that she did not get the uh, reminder. No, and I so, didn't either. Right. So I'm. I think there must have been something with the setup that I did last week, which is odd because it's that had part had been working pretty much. Um, yeah, without that always a, worked. Yeah, so I went. A hit. I went and looked in the junk. I went and looked everywhere, but I I found the original. It comes from Pamela Young, not young Pamela. <laughs> <laughs> and I just resent um, the original, uh, another email to you. So I'm hoping other folks are not having the same um, problem. So um, possible. I couldn't find the agenda either. Yeah, I couldn't um, either. Yeah. So, no. Yeah. So actually, in what order did you put the things on the agenda? So the uh, agenda begins with a roll call, yep. um, uh, announcements, yep. a general public comment, yep. new business, and other business not anticipated within 48 hours. Okay. Um, all right. And uh, in what so, order is the new business on it? The, uh, the uh, a discussion of a change from uh, committee to commission. Okay an update on the Northampton Disability um, Commission, ADA access to town hall, and approval of no November and December minutes. Okay. So um, let me just ask, Asa, do you have uh, uh, email addresses for all of the members? Yeah. 
I can't hear you. You have to move your your. Uh... Um, I, I might have a list somewhere, but I don't believe so. All right. If you um, will come in, I will give you my list, and if you would then just email them the public link, we can try to make sure that everyone is there. So, um, so Cody is here. He um, he hasn't yeah. turned on his. Um, Oop. Mike or, or okay. uh, video. Yeah. Okay. And I got a, a note from Jim um, that said that he would probably have to be in and out mm -hmm. because somebody is coming to clear off his roof, right. which I totally get. Today is going to be a scary day. I know. Yep. Um, and so he got somebody to clear off his roof and he will be in and out. And I had not heard from Saren and I have not heard uh, from Ian. Right. And I have not um, heard from them either. Uh, I did hear from Councillor DeAngelis and um, uh, she is unable to join us today and she sends her regrets. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I think what, I think she only had one thing to tell us anyway, which is that she can't do what we thought we, we were going to rely on her to do. So um but we have at the moment cody and elise and me correct that's correct mm -hmm. huh. yeah i'm wondering if people are having link problems well yeah that's why i've um I've yep. asked uh asa yeah asa to send out the i've never understood how the computer decides what how to put your name down like I get things from different people with different names in the inbox. And I've learned after a while that personal means that one. And sometimes it comes with the last name first. Sometimes it comes with the first name first. And I actually have no idea how the computer decides to do that. I don't either. So here's um, Marty's in the attendees. I'm gonna um, promote oh, yes. her to okay. panelist. Yeah, now we have a quorum, okay. Yeah, yeah. But uh, hello, Marty. Yeah, I believe you're muted, Marty. Yeah, her her mic and um, so there she, she is. is. Yeah. There yeah. She is. Okay. Cool. Yay! Did you have trouble getting into this meeting as well? Yes, I did, and it's okay. exactly what happened yesterday. I had I had a library meeting last night and I've never seen it do this thing where you have to add you have to put in a 12 digit number just what I need to do. Oh, it asked for a pass um word? No, or? it asked for the webinar number. Oh, okay. Hmm. And huh. I don't know whether it's because I'm working from a Mac, it could be. My phone is ringing. Hold on. Um yeah, I, I'm wondering whether, so I, of course, had uh, tried to set this up so that after the other s special meeting, so that there wouldn't be two invites floating around at the same time and, and did it pretty quickly. So I'm wondering whether I just missed a step in my setup, because normally you're not asked to give the um, meeting well, I ID. Well, I don't you, Pamela. Okay. I don't you, because I had to do this last night for the library meeting. Hmm. So, yeah. Well, okay. So did did Saren come in while I was uh, on? She did not, and um, no. I did ask Asa to send out um, yeah those Remind emails someone. to everyone. Yes. So yeah. I'm working. Oh, you know that. what? I think I I I'm, I apologize. I think Saren um, did send me an email that she may. Um, that she might have had a doctor's appointment. Let me check on that. She has okay, a dental know, appointment. Yes. yes. I know right. she had one last week, but so she couldn't make the Amherst College oh. meeting, but I didn't know that it was about this one. Because she... Um, Maybe you're right. Um, she... I know. I mean, I was outside uh, the... Went to the Black Sheep yesterday, and my God, nobody except the Black Sheep had shoveled that sidewalk at all. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, climbing through that snow was unbelievable. And we knocked on the door of the, uh, we opened the door of the uh, bookstore, the new bookstore, and told her that it was her responsibility to clear it or her own or her landlords. Mm -hmm. And then we came out of the black sheep. She was out there with a shovel, but the place was impassable. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't have been hard for inspection services to see it because right, it's right. right outside their door. Right. Was it 24 hours though? Uh, well, 24 hours from what time is a good question. Yeah, because it was still snowing on Sunday quite a bit. Yeah, This was yesterday so afternoon around three o'clock. Yeah, but it, it was still snowing on Sunday afternoon right around then. So I didn't expect yesterday to be. Oh, OK. All right. I don't, so, know, so, I don't know what time they determined that the 24 hours is up. That's a really okay. good question. All right. So Jim is yeah. with us and I oh, am yay. going to get us started by reading the. Um, OK, perfect. All right. All right, I'm going to mute. Mm -hmm. So the Disability Access Advisory Committee um, is meeting virtually. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting is being conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. See the instructions um, contained in the agenda. No in-person attendance of of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Uh, and the time is 11.37. Okay, thank you, Pamela. This is the beginning of the DAAC meeting, Disability Access Advisory Committee for January, 2024. And uh, I need to do a roll call, so Elise Link. Here. Um, Jim Crudenier. Here. Marty Smith. Here. Cody Rooney. Here. Okay. And Saren Darren is not here. And Ian is not here. Correct? And I'm Myra Ross and I am here. We have five people. We do have a quorum. Do we have any announcements? I don't hear any announcements. Do we hear any, do we have any members of the public who wish to speak? There are no members, uh, no attendees, so, so no okay. members of the public. Okay, so we can go to our agenda items um, the first one I think is um, under old business, becoming a commission. And I guess the last thing I heard from Pat DeAngelis is that um, we need to petition the council to become a commission. And it's not, um, I mean, at the moment, I think the only advantage is that if you are a commission, you have the ability to accept contributions from the town or from private entities. And you might have, I don't know, I don't think there's any more cloud involved with it, um, but you do have the ability to have a budget. You have the ability to get money appropriated to you. You have the ability to ask them to, um, uh, ask the town council to approve a different um, rule, a different number of legislation number, which entitles you to get the parking receipts uh, for handicap parking violation. And apparently it's not very enforced in Amherst. Apparently I did write to the town clerk. It's very, very little money, not the clerk, the uh, assessor. It's very little money. Um, so, I mean, at the moment, it could be something that we would do that wouldn't change very much for us. But in the future, we would be able to perhaps have some money budgeted. In other towns, the money that is budgeted um, has been collected over time because it doesn't dry up. Well, town money, uh, I don't know if the town money would dry up. In it, it, Sometimes it goes over a year so you can collect it. Um, and it's certainly if it's from private contributions, you can collect it and you can initiate projects 
that would benefit the community on the basis of accessibility that don't need to go through any other board. So that would be the advantage. Um, does anybody know anything more about this than I've just said, or want to correct anything I've just said? No. All right, is this something we still want to do? Myra, I'm sorry, Here's I just Aaron. joined. Yay. Okay. I, yeah, I just joined a little late. So what are we talking about? Is that the money that is raised by the HP uh, parking violations and that should be turned back to the AAC? Is that what the topic is? Um, <clears throat> if we become a commission, there oh, are two oh, things that I... the two things the town has to do is one, the council would have to approve us becoming a commission, which I forget the number of the legislation. I have it all in a memo that I sent, I but I don't have it in front of me. The uh, other one is they have to approve us receiving direct the money from the HP violations, parking violations. And um, that yes. money is, I co contacted the assessor and there's very little money. They, they really do not enforce or fine people very heavily. Right. I see. I there see. are other towns that do. There are other towns that have raised the first offense fine to $300 as is permitted in legislation. Amherst has not done that. So, you know, but it doesn't matter what the official uh, low point of the, um, you know, what the first offense costs if they don't enforce it and they never, you know, ask people to pay or rarely ask people to pay, then it doesn't matter what the price is because they don't have to pay. So I don't know how big an issue this is for people. And so I want to bring it up before we pursue it. Oh, the other thing you missed, Sarah, is you do have the ability to collect money from outside sources. Like you can, you know, like you can accept contributions from the public. And in mm -hmm. many towns, there are small appropriations that come from the town each year direct to the commission, which has the ability to spend the money without going through other committees. Oh, maybe that's a good idea. Maybe we can also request for some money from the uh, CDBG monies they get or something. I, there like are all kinds of things we could, did yeah. Jim, did you say yeah. something? Yeah. Did I hear I Jim? See. Marty has her hand raised. Marty does, okay, I heard, okay. Okay. Um, I thought the issue really was that um, our a board is a temporary. It's not a permanent um, committee. Yep. And, and that you want to be a commission because that is a permanent committee. Yes. Yep. That yeah. actually, yeah. I mean, that's the reason that this should be a no-brainer. Because yeah. this committee has existed for over 30 years and it's still it a committee. Um, so the change in nomenclature seems like it's a no-brainer, but there are those other uh those other things that come with being a commission. Um and so I thought I'd put those out. So should we pursue this as in, of course, we're a commission because we uh have been here for 30 years. That's right. Yes. Remember exactly what year? 30, 1990, 1991? Something like that. Mm, I don't no. remember. Well, but anyway. I mean, yeah, Myra, my, um, the route I would take was just to push for us to be a commission because of the long time as being as a committee. I would leave the other financial parts aside for the time being. Let us first get the first step done and then we will work, work over it and okay. then we can request that's what i would do because once we put the dollar amount they'll be so scared yep. and they will be against it to stop it and i know this was i don't know whether you got a chance to discuss it or not but we lost our member joe tringali passed away oh no yeah yeah and uh so i didn't know I, that 
Yeah. And I I think it was just, I forgot now the date. Do you remember Jim when he passed away? December 27. 27. Oh yeah. my goodness. I had yeah. no idea. Ooh, yeah. Wow. yeah. And you, you know how, how this was something he always wanted to do. You yeah. know, change the committee commission, and we should do it as a big effort in his honor. Yeah, thank you. I but really have no idea. Yeah. yeah, either. Yeah, he was actually a very, very special person for this committee. He was. He was because he great, never gave up on anything. Yeah, yeah. and a great and, advocate on everything, and so knowledgeable. So it would be a big. Uh, Miss, and I think the Senate is going to uh, recognize and close off early on Thursday uh, in honor of him. Really? Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I had no yeah. idea he had gone. No, yeah. I didn't yeah. either. I, I mean, I haven't been paying attention to much lately. Was there an obituary? Is that how you No, you just know? I, no, I did not see an obituary yet. No, but there was memorial service is going to be done uh, in spring, later in spring. Oh, huh. yeah. Joe Comerford initiated the, the Senate action, which was very nice, but she had a lot of respect for Joe. There was also a nice article in the Gazette. Yes. Uh, a few weeks back, uh, not a few weeks, a few days back, I should say, yes. talking about Joe and what he did, you know, because he was instrumental back in the late 1970s of making really significant improvements in, in housing for people with disabilities. Yeah. Uh, so 45 years as a local advocate is astonishing and unprecedented yeah. to the, to my knowledge. Yep. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Yep. No, I did not see the article. I, I, I have I, to go look for it. You know what? It. I have the article. I will scan it and I will email to all of you. That'd be great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That's that's very, very sad. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. I'm very sorry about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you for telling us. I really had no idea. Hmm. All right. So I will draft a letter and I will mention him in the letter and I will ask them to. Yes. Uh, to take this action in his honor. Um, Absolutely, that yeah. would be great. Yeah, no, that-, that um, And they okay. all know, they all, everybody in town knows him. Oh yeah. Including the town manager. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I might wanna suggest that you uh, ask for a motion to- Oh, good idea. Yeah. <clears throat> so I need a motion to uh, write, I need a motion to send a memo to the town council requesting that we be changed from Disability Access Advisory Commission to the Am to committee to the Amherst Disability Commission. Um, yeah, that's what I need. Do I have I most, Thank you, Cody. I most is not. He said it led to the town council. You move that I I missed it again. Say the last three words again. That you said it led to the council. Yes. Okay. All right, I need a second. Second, Elise. Okay, so Cody made the motion, Elise seconded it. Um, yeah, it, it, the Joe's name is not in the motion, but I can put it in the letter, that's fine. Yeah, okay. Is, that would be great. All right. All right, everyone in favor say yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay, and I am a yes, and Marty. Yes. I didn't, okay. Yes. Okay, so everybody opposed say no. There isn't anybody opposed because everybody said yes. Um, so it's six to zero. 
that we're going to do that. Okay. All right. Seems awfully strange to do other things right now after that. But um, okay. So the other thing um, was Ian's uh, connection with Northampton and he's not here. So we will leave that for the moment. Um, Pamela, what was the last one that's on there? So the next two things are um, to talk about ADA access to town hall and then approval of the November okay. and okay. December minutes. Okay. ADA access to town hall came up after our meeting with Amherst College last week. And the question is, what can we do as a committee slash commission to impress upon the town that despite people's best efforts, Town hall is not accessible, um, that although once one is in the door, one can get to all of the floors, getting to the getting into the door or getting in the door is not practical or possible for people who use wheelchairs because the topography actually precludes that. And someone had suggested that we not tell them how to do it, but that we tell them that they need to do it. And I, Marty, you said something last week that I'd like you to pursue, which has to do with putting a lift on the stairs at the main stair that they never did. Um, we never were approached about that, were, the, were we? No. We were never approached about the, that stair replacement. And at one point I asked Christine if they were going to submit an application to the MAAB because they weren't making that entrance accessible. And she said, of course, except that we never saw it. And it should have come to us. Did, all they, answers... did they actually do it? without telling us or did they just not even do it? I don't know. Which stairs okay. are you talking about? The front of the town hall? The front town hall stairs. They never touched it. I know they did some renovation work there to fix the steps. So yeah, I they, don't think they rebuilt those stairs. Up. They rebuilt those stairs. And yeah. when you rebuild existing stairs, you have to bring that entrance into compliance. And oh, then, that, I, hmm. yeah, you can't just replace a set of stairs that's non-compliant. I don't think they did. Yeah, they yes. replaced those um, brownstone stairs. Yep. They're still working on it. It's not done yet? I don't think so. They've had it torn up for quite a while. I haven't been down there lately, but I don't think it's done. It's not quite a hundred percent done, but they um, have. Uh, they're pretty close to the end of the project, so they finally got uh, someone to review uh, the issues that they were having around the, with the foundation and got the granite in for a replacement of the steps. So um, they're still caution tape preventing their use so you, it, the entrance is still the stair the entrance through the stairs is still not um open but they're fairly close so we need to do this pretty quickly or yeah, maybe um, just does anybody know the law about how we can interfere with it well the one way is uh complaint to the Department of Justice. That's mm -hmm. the APA solution. And the other is complaint to the town manager and the building inspector, because they should have both caught that. I mean, we should have seen an application. An application for variance. So what we really need to do is write a letter that says that the stairs, because of the work that's being done on the stairs, they should have, by they, 
do you know any legal like what what chapter and verse that is um i don't know the chapter and verse but they should have filed a variance okay or so they should have filed a variance because they were not going to make the stairs compliant even though yes. they were doing substantial work on them yes. and then yes. okay okay and then they didn't file a variance well we were never informed that they filed a variance so the question is did they file a variance yes. without our knowledge and had they filed a variance that had gone through us, we would have reminded them that we would have reminded them that. Um, no, I lost my train of thought. But we would have. We, said, we, we can't say how we would have voted, but. Um, I just dropped my thought now. <laughs> you know, maybe what we should ask them is. Uh, uh, because uh, due to the regulations, every time there is a work done on stairs, uh, it has to provide equal access. And since we know it is not uh, in that status right now, what are the plans to address it? Mm -hmm. Have a variance been filed or something? Let's ask a question rather than say, you got to do this, you got to do that. What are the plans? Just like a reminder of the codes. I did not know that. I thought they only had to do it if the value was over a certain amount of the value of the property. So no, I didn't any, know. The, the law says that anything they do has to be compliant, even if it's under any dollar value. You can't make yeah. a, a something... You can't build something non-compliant. Right. Here is some public space or it yeah. has to be ADA compliant. Okay. So we have to write a letter that says we... Um, we've noted with concern that they have rebuilt yeah. and that they did not come to us with any request for variance from the MAB, MAAB about um, the non-compliance of the stairwell and what are their intentions regarding accessibility yeah. of the main door. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, and I in fact, what, what are, to... go ahead. I know, I know what I wanted to talk about. Oh, good. Uh, because I'm not sure that there's an understanding of this. So when you apply for a variance from the MAAB, you have to submit three copies. One has to be submitted directly to the building inspector. One has to be submitted directly to the um, MAAB. And the other has to be submitted to the Independent Living Center and town commission that is a requirement so when our packet from amherst college got lost in town hall that was pretty disturbing because they had to send it to us yeah That's who did amherst college or town hall yeah amherst college yeah okay yeah i mean that yeah. We have to see every single variance in town, which is why the university goes to this board. Yep. Yeah. Even if it's after they already did the job. Well, yeah. <laughs> they do Sometimes things. they did the job already and then they yeah. come in and then they say, oh, you didn't like it? Too bad. It's already built. Okay. Um, all right. So you weren't party to that, Marty. It's okay. <laughs> No, that's okay. Oh, oh. All right. So I guess I'm concerned because either the variant variance was applied for and we weren't informed about it, or I, they just never bothered to apply. Yeah. Well, let's let's ask in this letter. Yep. Okay. You know, we have right, no so, idea, but we should remind that according to the codes, if we can get the number, and you have to provide aqua access to the stairs so what are the plans for that yep 
and we'd like to be concerned because we haven't received any copy of a various request if you have any done it. And also that trail of the various um, requests, I think we should, if we're a town committee or a, hopefully a commission, we should get notified immediately rather than the independent living center because I don't think they have actual, they have to find somebody who will contact who, you know? So it makes well, Sarah, sense. that's actually in the code. Oh, that's actually is? written in the code. Yeah. Living, independent living center as in Stavros? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it says Stavros or, or it says Stavros and? It says Stavros and. Well, it says the independent living center. Because every but time... The, but the conjunction is and um i'd have to get a copy of it to to look at it i okay so i'll tell you what i always did was i sent one to to stavros and i sent a copy to town hall when i was doing these kind okay. of things. and then the town hall will send a copy to our committee uh yeah it should come directly to us cuz it's addressed to us it shouldn't sit around someplace on somebody's desk. Yeah. So I guess the question is, when it comes to us, does it come from the Stavros one or does it come to, from the town one? Or could it come from either? Um, It comes from whoever's preparing the variants. Right. Whoever's sending it. Okay. Yeah. All right. But I'm saying if we're not in the loop because if it's not an and, if it's an or, and someone sends it to the inspector and to Stavros and to the MAAB, we don't, we're not in the loop. How do we get in the loop? What is the usual? Well, we are in the loop. You know, and one thing that's interesting before the pandemic, we always met at Stavros. Yep. The board yeah. always met at Stavros. Yep. So there was this very close relationship between Stavros and this committee. What happened? The pandemic. And also it was difficult for some of us to get to Stavros um, because, well, at the time, Saren worked there and Tori worked there. So it was easy and Joe worked there. So yeah. it was easy. That's how it got established, I think. And then when uh, the, oh, the pandemic and then Saren didn't work there anymore, she retired. And then Tori left the committee. So there didn't seem to be any reason to go back. And I know people like me, um, you know, even though I live five minutes from Stavros, I would sit around for, you know, an hour on each end waiting for transportation. So it didn't seem very reasonable um, to continue to do it there, to go back because Zoom is so easy. And I'm sure Elise wouldn't be able to get there either. No, um, not without well, paratransit. And I had the same problem that Myra had. I would get there for an 1130 meeting. I would get there at 1030. Yep. I wasn't yep. talking about it as being held there i was more talking about we seem to have lost the connection to stavros out of sight out of mind maybe could be it just seems like we've lost that connection well and also not every town has an independent living center so right. i think uh you know there should be another way that it will be handled with the towns. Of course, this is coming from our town. That's another town letting the other part of the town know about it. That's another question. I think they weren't aware that they had to go with the regulation. So let's see what will happen with this reminder. Okay, letter. in the letter, in the letter, is it wise for me to say in light of the fact that there are no accessible entrances to town hall given the topography of the site yeah. um this would have been a fabulous opportunity to create accessibility through the right. use of a lift excellent and yes is that yes. right marty do i do that or do i not do that um hmm. And we found another, we looked into another solution entry from the back. We never, we never answer. heard any follow-up on that either. So I have no idea if the town is aware of that. 
maybe I'll just leave it. There is no accessible entrance, and this would yeah. have been an yeah. opportunity this for them. To... An opportunity, I think so. Yeah. Okay. I think we shouldn't okay. give them. We shouldn't try and give them a solution. Okay, well, I certainly can't. Yeah. I'm not an architect. I don't know anything about it. Um, yeah. Okay, all right. So there were two letters I should write. I think I'll send this one before I send the commission. <laughs> <laughs> now that you've made us a commission okay all right so there's one other thing that i want to bring up before the minutes um it's things not anticipated um essentially it snowed on sunday and um i guess um tracy zapian sent me something about the new snow removal bylaw which did get passed by the council and it moves enforcement from the police to inspection services so the police are no longer going to be knocking on people's doors if they didn't shovel which i don't know how often they ever did it is now the job of inspection services to do that and elise brought out an important point which is when i talked about yesterday climbing through the snow all over main street when i just tried to go to the black sheep I mean, it was really quite spectacular how much snow there was and how much there was not, you know, only the black sheep had actually shoveled it all the way down. And because there was so much snow all over the rest of the place, by the time people walked to the black sheep, there was um, like there was snow all over the place. But you could see that they had shoveled it and people just got it moved there because it was stuck to everything that we walked through. And. Yeah, I don't know where the 24 hours was, but in some ways that would have been a perfect opportunity for inspection services to get out there and knock on doors and say, this is a reminder that you need to clean the sidewalk by eight o'clock tomorrow morning or by whatever time it is. Um, and I'm, I just don't know how that's supposed to work. And I don't know if anybody knows, but boy, oh boy, yesterday was yeah. treacherous. I mean, it was treacherous. You. I, I think if you're also, open for business, you should just do it, you know? Yeah. Well, if you're going to open so for business, shovel. The question mm -hmm. is, some of those places are unoccupied, okay. right? And so the landlord, who still oh. uh, owns the place. And they should has, do it. Yeah, they have a responsibility. Yeah. So in what way, how is the town going to disseminate this information I think it's really important for inspection services to start to let it be known that there are, you know, about this new bylaw. And the question is, should we be putting something on the DAAC website? You know, apparently East Hampton made a video. I, I'm i not thrilled about making videos because I don't want to be in one. But um, if somebody does want to be in one, that's great. I think the inspection services needs to send something out to all of those business owners slash landlords and tell them about the new snow bylaw. Maybe the town council needs to do that. How do we do that? Anybody got an idea? Pamela, do you have an idea? So I, I am, I'm not sure what the process should be for notification, but I do think that it would be um, appropriate for the committee to ask um, a series of questions so we I, and um uh, to inspection services to get yeah and um, information I, about the plan like what what's their plan for going forward okay yeah and i uh, the, uh, i'm also going to discuss this issue in the new business so it's kind of connected to this so okay so um boy there's three letters um anybody want to write one of them? um marty do you want to write something up just to send an email on the base up from the daac to inspection services about how they're planning that what we want to know is how they're planning to inform it's actually to the town council passed this right that they need to figure out how to inform businesses. Is that right? So who do we address this to? That's my question. Town manager? So I I think I could start by sending an email to inspection services and seeing if I could um, find 
out some information and disseminate the response back. And I um, just want to note that you had a motion to approve the first letter, but you don't have a motion yet to approve the second one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Well, let's let's deal with this one first. Okay, so thank you. You are going to write something to inspection services and find out how the new, how the business owners in downtown, business owners and landlords in downtown are going to be informed of the new snow removal bylaw and, um, you know, fines associate, fines and responsibilities associated with it like that. How are they going to find out about it? Because what's out there now is sort of a mess. Yeah, I will definitely do that. And um, Elise has her hand, hands, her okay. hand raised. Okay, Elise. Um, okay, so this sort of has something to do with something. Does, 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 hello? hello? Yeah, you're there. Yeah. Okay. So um, I understand that this, is, this may be a somewhat different issue, but as long as we're on snow removal requirement, does this include bus stops in any way? Should? Uh, no, right? Isn't that the PVTA's responsibility? Didn't we go through this already? Doesn't yeah. the PVTA have responsibility for clearing bus stops, Pamela? Everybody Remember passes this? the book. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. They claim no response. They're like, oh no, it's the DPW. And then the DP and it's, oh no, it's the, you know, the whoever owns the property. They don't, nobody wants to take responsibility. And I'm sick to death they're going through this every year. Pamela, can it you should. include that in your letter to uh inspection services? <laughs> yes, about I can. The, the inclusion of PBTA bus stops. That's We've been through this before, and yep. you're right. Nobody takes responsibility. No. At all. But no, I think the I think, PBTA yeah. technically own, owns the bus shelters, or but there isn't but a shelter at each stop. There's not a shelter at each stop, no. and they just they won't do it. Yep. Okay. All right. So we need to go back to the yeah. uh, town hall. I need a motion from this committee about uh, ex uh, general about accessibility of town hall and particularly as it relates to the construction of the new, the, the not construction, the, what do you call it? Oh, renovation okay. of the steps. Okay, you're on a different, okay. I had we to switched. go back. Oh, okay, I didn't realize, okay, gotcha. No, Pamela, Pamela's gonna write the letter that we talked okay. about about the snow and include what you brought up, which is okay, totally great, relevant. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Then she told me that I was bad because we didn't go. We didn't get a motion. That's yeah. what I'm doing now. Okay. okay. All right. I need a motion about that. Town hall. Anybody? Okay. So. You're moving that that we write a letter requesting um, those that be at town hall to um, what their plans are for making the building accessible. Right. Okay. From the front of the building, where the stairs uh, are. Anywhere. <laughs> I take one entrance. Well, if okay. we do it that way, though, won't they say, well, we already have an accessible entrance on we the main street? A, no, we don't have an accessible entrance. Mm -hmm. There's no accessible entrance. Yep. There's the one that everybody believes is accessible. Notification. Sorry, I'm losing my voice. Yeah. No, I, okay, I think I know how to handle it. So the motion is that we write to the remind we who is this going to this is say that again please whoever said it broke up who is who are we sending this to well uh, christy might be senior planner if she's aware of this maybe right or who's in charge of doing these things and paul buckleman should be in Pamela, who should we send it to? 
so I, uh, since the, the purpose is to write um, um, and ask a question about plans going forward, or yeah. to, I would think that you could send it to Christine and to um, the town manager. Yeah, or, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So we have a motion from Marty to send a note to the town manager and the, the head planner uh, to find out about the um, to find out why we never received a request for a variance for the front steps when they made you know when they did that um, was there a request made right did they request a variance and we didn't know about it or did they not request a variance and if not why not since town hall is not accessible yes okay I do I have a second. Um I said, uh, uh. okay, Cody's the second. Thank you. All right. Um, so we're going to vote on that. All in favor of sending a note about the, the accessibility of town hall, um, as as we put it in the in the um, motion. Um, please say yes. 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 Okay, hey. I heard Marty, I heard Saren, I heard Ian, I heard, did I hear Elise? Yes. Yes, and did I hear Jim? Is Jim still here? Yes. Yes, I heard Cody. Okay. And, okay. Yeah, I heard, I heard Cody. I heard yeah. Cody. I didn't hear Jim. I did. And I, okay. And, okay, and so that again is six in favor and zero opposed. Okay. Um, all right, Saren, did you have new business? Yes. Okay. So I'll tell you of my um, personal experience on Sunday. And we have an extraordinary storm. And I think in my area, we got over a foot, at least 13, 14 inches. So um, I need help in the morning and in the evening by my personal care attendants. So the um, brave girl that came on morning, she said, the roads were plowed once. It's okay, but not great, but at least doable. And my driveway, again, was plowed only, I mean, uh, shoveled, not shoveled, plowed uh, by Amherst Nurseries once. And so she was able. And then I was uh, taking a look at it to see if I got second plowing either for, for the street by the public works or my driveway. And it was terrible. Uh, there was nothing was touched. And this was like about four o'clock or 4.30. And I tried making calls, public works. There is nobody. There is nobody that can immediately say, oh, I see, we forgot those streets and we need to do it and that kind of thing. Or whereabouts are they? So I can tell my PCA, don't come at this time, come at, at this time, you know? There was not a single person. So I have a Guilford's iPhone number because we were dealing with some things and he had given me once upon a time. So uh, very apologetically, I called him and I excused, you know, the reason I called and everything. And he says, Saren, don't worry about it. I'll get on the phone right now. And within an hour, my street was plowed. I mean, not to, to the blacktop level, but at least it passable, doable. So now I thought in this day and age, there should be a place where we can request. This is like an emergency service. So I could not find, I was lucky I had Guilford's number and he was available and he got my, answered my call. So like, there's another thing I'd like to know. How, what is the schedule for the towns? And my, uh, the girl that came helped me out in the morning, she comes from South Hadley, and she said 116 was very clear up to Atkins. After Atkins, the plowing was very bad. So it seems like 
whoever handles that part of the uh, high, uh, 116 did a better job than our town is doing. So I'd like to know the procedures the town has on plowing the streets, the side streets, the main streets. So thank you, Soka. Thank you. So that I thought I would uh, bring it up to your attention and see what kind of ideas we might have. I mean, it well, was that... an unusually uh, bad storm that I accept, but in a situation like that, if we cannot get any help uh, that needs to come to help us, what are we going to do? Spend the whole night on our wheelchairs until the roads are cleared? when we can get some help? This is a great question. Yeah. Um, it's not the same question as why Amherst roads don't seem to be plowed as well as roads in adjoining communities. And I yes. wish this was the first time or the second time or the third time that I have yeah. heard this. Yes. So that is an Amherst DPW question. But the question about your particular streets, um, like emergencies, this is a big question. You're right. What is the procedure? Yeah. And whom do we con contact on um, off work hours or on weekends? So that was the problem. There was not a single person that would answer the phone on a Sunday. And especially everybody's working, probably doing something related to the snow. I have no idea, but but I'd like to really know the procedure so we don't have to get uh, everybody gets Guilford's private iPhone number and call them and say, "Hey, Guilford, do this for us." You know. It's not yep. the right way to do it, but there should just be a separate line where we can communicate for emergency. Maybe it would be through the police uh, line. I don't know. Or what do you think, Pamela? Crest, or maybe Chris. So I want then a priority list of people like Saren that should go first in terms of plowing. Yeah, I, I think that this is a perfect question for me to ask Gilford. Uh, I'm sure I know that the DPW has a plowing schedule, you know, every town does. Um, and there are lots of factors I'm sure involved in deciding which streets um, are, you know, what their schedule is uh, as far as which streets are are done first, uh, and I wouldn't begin to even try to guess at that. But I would, um, I would be happy to ask him um, to either attend the next meeting or to provide an answer so that I can share it with you at the next meeting. Like one thing I can think of is, I would hope that they went to places that have a lot of people who might be in this situation of needing PCA assistance like that's what i was getting Clark at. house like yep. uh like the chestnut court like ann whalen like places that are known to house people who have disabilities that might require pca support but like Saren, there are many people who live in their own homes who don't yeah. live in those you know congregate housing uh units who need help always who, who should be known to someone as people who need help getting um getting themselves played out plowed out so people can come and do their jobs to assist them a um, list of people a priority list for those people yeah also so, uh, like if we see that the snow is really falling terrible Although they did it in maybe six o'clock or seven o'clock in the morning, you know, the snow got pretty heavy during yes. the morning hours until like two o'clock or something. So there should be another immediate, another way for us to communicate. Maybe they cannot do it, you know, but immediately, but they should just give us like a time range where we can communicate 
they are so busy right now, they can only get to the roads until seven o'clock. That's at least a guide. You know, then we can tell the people, don't come before seven because they cannot do it, that kind of a thing. And there was absolutely nobody. And then uh, I called my daughter and my son-in-law. They said they will come, but they cannot clean the street. They cannot plow the street. They don't have any plowing thing. They'll just shovel it, you know? So it wasn't sufficient. It is not enough. So we need like uh, the town plowing trucks. Yeah, no, uh, emergency procedures or procedures yeah. for people who are, I mean, this was an emergency procedure, but it was somebody, but it's not like you, you know, it's not like you needed to call 911. Um, you know, you sh this should have been known to someone. Are there, are, are there people in the town who, who wish to be known as people who have priority needs in cases like this? Are there people, is there a phone number? Is there an email address that is going to get regularly checked when people have emergencies like this you know what would be the procedure you know obviously if you're having a medical emergency you call 911 but that's not what this was no well i i would point out that uh, and this is something that would be really interesting to hear what gilbert has to say because in a medical emergency, you may call 911, but then how does the ambulance necessarily get to where you are? And I'm, and question. this doesn't involve necessarily a person with a disability. It can be a person who's had a heart attack or something like yep. that. So what yeah, exactly. does the town have in place to respond um, to these kinds of issues? Because it's not just a question, well, we'll dispatch the ambulance because you know the street may not be plowed and that may not be possible. Yeah. So how does that work? So I, I got to run, as I've told Myra and, um, and Pamela, but, the, you know, it's been a really interesting discussion. So good luck, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. So what? Um, OK, so we can, Pamela, we can um, find out. And I think it's a bigger question than Guilford, although the, the plowing is a question. And it is a bigger question. And it is people do come over the Amherst town line from Granby, from Belchertown, from Hadley, and it's always the same story. Yeah. Those towns are yeah. plowed and Amherst is not. Yeah. And, and I've heard him say, it's because we're not allowed to use salt. That's what well, I've heard on. him say. Well, I mean, we just want it plowed. That's well, what it is, you know, I mean. Yeah, no, I mean, if he's not allowed to use salt, you need to plow more, not less. not allowed anyway. to use salt, that's ridiculous. What the well, hell? There are, I think there are by there there are there are given the aquifer, like at least on Route Nine, that's what a colleague of mine at work found out was because oh. of the aquifer, they weren't allowed to use salt, but that means you have to plow more, not less. Okay. Wow, um, shows how much I know. <laughs> um but there are there are questions about the plowing and it's it's yeah. I mean, I don't know what happened on Sunday. I noticed that it plowed very early in my neighborhood, but then not again. Yeah. I don't know when the next plowing was, probably at night. And they probably figured we're not going to keep going through because it'll just keep snowing. But the problem is there are people who actually have needs between when they feel like it's economical for them to plow. Yeah. And so, I mean, maybe it's fair because most people aren't going to go out. Maybe that's fair for them to save money by not plowing as much. But there should yeah. be a way for certain people to be known to him that these people need to be plowed out or that he okay. will let those people know. He'll have an email list that says, I'll plow, you know, I'm not going to plow again until seven or something. Yeah, right, right. So that's what we need to know, Pamela. Maybe. In the cases, yeah. in special yeah. cases... In special cases like the one that came up on Sunday, and I'm sure Saren's not the only one, um, where people actually have continuing needs. It's not a 911 call. I assume when the ambulance can't get through, they call PD DPW. One would hope that that would be true, um, and that or that they say or that when they get the 911 call, they call DPW and say, "I have a 911 call. Get there and plow it." Um, yeah. Hopefully, they do that. I can't say that they do, but hopefully they do. Um, but in this so case, I this think... was not an emergency. This was a, this was something that 
you just needed to communicate about and how did they do that we need a we need an email we need a phone number we need somebody who's going to be assigned to check those things that's right i don't know how it did a thought comes to my mind that they should create a database of people that will need special assistance on events like this maybe they should have different events you know like flooding or this or that you know whatever or a, 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 or COVID case was another one. They wouldn't let people go through. And um, so they it, then if they, uh, they want to be listed on this database and in a case like this, and they can say the first plowing is done on this time, and the second one is going to be done after the snow is done, maybe around five, between five and seven or something like that. That will be sufficient. You know, for those of us that need, depend on some other people. That so, will yeah. have, oh, I'm sorry to know. interrupt. Marty has her hand, hands up. Okay, go Marty. Yeah, I was just gonna say, um, you know, when we had the Snocktober storm, do you remember that mm-hmm. one? Mm-hmm. Yeah, where many of us yeah. were without power for five days or so. Yeah. Oh, yeah, years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, the question is, one of the things that we found out during that storm was that the university had no plans for disabled mm-hmm. students. So we had students living on upper floors with no access to elevators. Oh, my no God. Way get, no way to get food. Because there was no power, you know, the university was out of power for two days. And we realized that it was wholly insufficient to ma- to take care of the people. And um, I, it's a bigger problem, but I think that needs to be looked at um, to develop your database of who yeah. needs help. And you know who do we go? Who do we look for when there's an event like that? Because that wasn't that long ago. Yeah, that wasn't yeah. just a weird thing. Yeah, 2011. So uh, one thing I was just thinking is they use robocalls. The schools are closed. There's going to be a snowstorm, right? I mean, you get them all the time. I mean, you you get ones you don't want, but you get good ones too. And maybe this could be a robocall that the town puts out. That's to every phone number they have for someone who lives in the town of Amherst that says, um, in the event of an emergency, we are collecting a database of people who need help, um, who, who, you know, who need help um, on a regular basis. We need to know who you are. Will you contact us at this telephone number or this email address? to let us know who you are so that we can inform you directly in you know in some kind of a weather or other emergency um about what what is going you know what we can do or what's happening is that something that would be good because the robocall could be useful in this case what do people think this is a you mean this robocall to build the a- to build up the database yeah yeah and then yeah is it through this doesn't the senior center sort of keep the list i don't know i I don't think so i don't know it's a good question yeah i thought that was a vulnerable list i think every yeah I don't know. Well, if they do, it's great, but not everyone who's vulnerable is a senior. So yeah, um, no, no. yeah. But no, I don't know anything about what the senior center does in this respect. Me either. Um, so it's a good question for a partnership, for sure. Yeah. Um. But if you don't know about it. I mean, like, if you go to the front page of the Amherst website right now, is there a thing that says, um, do, you know, do you want to be put on, or, you know, in an emergency, do you need help? Um, will, you know, are you a person who often needs help in an emergency? 
um, you know, can you let us know who you are? Does it say that on the website anywhere? No. <laughs> I've not seen it. I mean, I don't make a study of websites. You know, but... they, uh, the thing is, uh, when you get a robocall from the town, you know, many people just hang up. They don't go through it. And if they say, uh, call this number or send <laughs> uh, or contact this place, they might not have anything to write at that time. So it is better for them to see something in writing. So they always send something like, uh, who lives in this house? What, uh, write your name. Uh, do you have dogs? And check this box, that kind of a thing. Maybe over there, if you're disabled and might need emergency services, and if you give permission, check this box. Because they, they know. Wait, what uh, are you talking they, about? What about the dogs? I missed you. I lost you there. Uh, there is that form they ask if you have a what dog. What form? The census <laughs> form. Census form. On the census form. Ah, got yeah. it. Okay. Because, so, I mean, there should be a little, uh, little part, you know, in case of emergency. I always remember they ask for dogs because I don't have a dog, but I have a cat. They never ask for cats. so. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, this is so discriminatory. <laughs> Mom, but you don't have to pay for cats. You have to pay for dogs. Yes, you do. <laughs> I think it has to do with dog licenses. It doesn't have to do with the safety of yeah. your dog. It has you to don't do have with the license. Marty's right. Can they make money off of your dog? That's right. <laughs> But I mean, there should be something in writing, in my opinion. But my, my, what I want to bring it up, uh, we cannot bring up a solution to that uh, because they have their resources. They know other towns. They have, they can look at the state regulations or what they recommended, what successful towns do. You know, but why is there a big difference between South Adley and Amherst, for example? Good why question. don't we pay enough taxes? I don't know. I pay a big amount, big chunk for taxes, just living in my house all by my little self, you know, no one else. So nobody goes to schools. If you are a big family, that's another story. But they have to address to this. Right now, I think the emergency is for us to know a contact number. Like yep. Gilbert was the excellent contact because then within an hour, they came and plowed my street. You know? So okay. why isn't there another channel for us rather okay. than uh, bother their director to channel that? My first thought is through going through Chris if they have a number because this is non-violent they'll just make communicate they'll just call public words hey send your crews because this person needs assistance immediately that kind of a thing or the mm. police department so well pamela you're ms Cress right now <laughs> what would yeah, you so, say <laughs> so i i actually would um say that that both for Cress and for the police department, that these are not public, truly public safety concerns, which is probably not an, a popular opinion to have. Um, but those departments are supposed to be addressing larger public safety concerns. And um, not to say that it's not a safety concern for an individual, but I'm not certain that it is the it, it's within the broader mission of CRESS. I do think that there might be a solution um, or solutions that the town might think about that would address those issues. But um, I don't think that, um, that it, you know, in my opinion, it's not a, a broader public safety concern. And I will say that Elise has her hand up as well. Okay. Actually, I don't know whether, um, I should bring this up now, but we're talking about emergency things. And what I noticed when we had that freak snowstorm in 2011, um, and this is something sort of to do with it, they had a shelter open somewhere, but it was inaccessible unless you could drive. And I'm thinking that 
you know, there could be another situation where it's not just a snowstorm, but people may have to go to a shelter and there's no accessibility to, there's no plan from the town. You know, the fire department may say, well, the Mullen Center, but how do you, the hell, how do you get to it? I mean, that's just another component to what. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. I, I get concerned about that. Okay. That's a whole other funny. part of the same thing, but yeah. Part of the so, same. Pamela, are you able to figure out, I mean, you don't have to tell us, but you can try to figure out who it is that you should, um, put this to that would be able to give you more than a, oh, that's a good question response. Right. So I'm, I've am i been writing down the questions and I'll review the recording to make sure that I have them all. And I, I'm thinking that there are a couple of uh, different folks that I will um, ask questions of to try to get a complete answer. So, okay, um, cool. so one of the, for example, one of the things that I wrote down was just to ask Chief Nelson, what is um, the plan for EMTs if there is a, a snowstorm? Like, you know, does he have a, a plan in pr place that he would already in place about how emergency services would, would reach folks? So there may be things in place I, that we're just not aware of, but um, I will, mm -hmm. I'll gather all of my questions and then mm -hmm. um, ask them. And um, <clears throat> I also have, um, I don't have anything under new business, but I do have something under other business not anticipated within 48 okay. hours. So <laughs> please go for it. All right. So I actually, um, I do think before I do that, since you still have a quarum, if, if, uh, minutes, uh, if it's minutes approval. Yeah. So then we okay. can get those um, posts. We, do I have a motion for the November minutes to approve? Come on, folks. I need a motion for the minutes, for the yeah. November minutes. I didn't see them. So. Oh, sorry. I was unmuted. I'll I make a motion to accept. Okay. Do I have a second? I second it. Okay. All right. Uh, all. Uh, does anybody have any corrections or admit, uh, bleh, corrections or uh, additions or deletions? No. No? Yeah. Okay, all in favor of the November minutes approval? Say yes. aye, please. Aye. 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 Okay, uh, I and Cody, are you still there? I think he is. Yes, yes. okay. Aye. aye, okay, great. Okay, so that's again six, no, five. Aye. Um, uh, and how about December minutes? I need a motion for the I approval. move that we accept the December minutes. Okay. Need a second? A second. Okay, Marty. Um, and uh, uh, any corrections, additions, or deletions? Okay. All in favor of approving the December minutes, say aye. 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 That's three, four, and Cody. I did. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, so that's five again. All right, so we have two minutes. Now we have Pamela's <laughs> yeah. announcement or whatever it is. <laughs> right, so um, late yesterday afternoon, um, and I just read it prior to this meeting, I received an email from um, a person who I believe is the chair of the East Hampton um, Disability Access Advisory Committee. So I'm, I'm just going to read the email. Um, um, Myra, I have forwarded it on to you. Um, okay. But it says, hello, I am writing as the vice chair of the East Hampton Commission on Disability with a question for the Amherst Disability Access Advisory Committee. Could you please forward this to the chair? At our commission, we often find it difficult to carry our mission of advising city officials on disability issues because city officials rarely seek our advice and we are trying to figure out what to do about it. I was mm -hmm. wondering about your experience with Amherst city officials. How regularly do they actually bring projects and proposals to your commission for comment and what if any explicit policies does the city have to ensure that they do? Um, and then it uh, says, please let me know. Thanks uh, with a name and a telephone number. So I um, 
I just saw this just uh, minutes before our meeting. So I recently forwarded the email on to you, Myra, and I did um, respond to the gentleman with information about today's meeting, hoping that he might um, come in as an attendee for public comment, but he, uh, but it was very short notice. So, so that is my uh, um, issue of information that was not anticipated within 48 Thank hours. You. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have um, anything to say in response to that question? Well, I can say my experience, it didn't happen just like that. It took years of our committee working with the town, trying to work with the town. And many uh, town managers before Paul they used to, we used to request to meet with them and bring our issues to them. And so we, that's how I think we reached out and they were aware. And of course, Stavros was also a big force behind that too, you know, making that happen. So with the help of Stavros and advocates and those of us that were in this committee. So it took us a while but I remember working on the curb cuts, on the parking lots and everything. So um, what I can, this is, it has a big historical background. And now the town is really aware of our needs and they are behind us and they send their liaisons to our meetings. They used to at least more. And right now Pamela is there you know, yep. and Asa is there. So that's a big thing. And whatever we talk, they take it over to the departments. So we have representation from the town in all our meetings. I think that was well said, and I would agree with it. And I would add only one thing to it, which was, I don't know, you were there the whole time, but we've always had really strong liaisons who worked for the town we had epi we, yes i don't know who came between epi and maureen you could help me with that one more hey, plan. Uh, 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 he's he's the senior planner right now who's no who is what? it who was it he he works with um in uh, he's the senior planner of the town Oh, I, I thought that was Chris. No. Oh, no. No? He Who's the senior with planner? Chris. Huh? Who's the senior planner, Pamela? I don't... Ackerman? No. 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 Uh, I'm sorry. I missed the question. Who is the senior planner? senior planner? For the town. Because... I thought it was Chris, but Saren doesn't think so. No. Well, it was before Chris came. Oh, well, that I would not know. Yeah. I mean, he he works, he lives in Greenfield. And uh, he, I see his name all the time in the papers. Mm -hmm. uh, huh. Anyhow, I can't remember. Well, I don't yeah, I, I don't remember who, who was, but I know that the, the thing that I would add is that we've always had really strong town liaisons who believe yes. in the yes. mission. Yes. Um, exactly. You know, and, and that was really helpful because the town liaisons have, I think managed to turn what we talk about into action with people from the town. And I think Absolutely. that I, I don't want to underplay the importance of the liaison. And so, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, but anyway, it's an interesting, all right. Um, I'll try to get back to the guy. I have a couple of things to do first. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. But um, okay. Uh, interesting. Can I get a motion to adjourn unless anybody has anything else? I move that we adjourn. It's Elise. Okay. Second from someone? I second. second. Okay. Um, uh, all in favor uh, of adjourning? Say aye. 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 Oh, aye. 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 Okay. I heard everybody this time. Um, and the next meeting would be today is the 9th. It would be the 13th of February. Is that right? Yes, that's right. February okay. 13. Same time, same place. Same place. <laughs> okay, that's good. Very good.
All right. Everybody have a good month and let's hope that it only snows between 8 p.m. and 8 a.m. Just like in Camelot. Yeah. Yes. I love that. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna right. have a Tuesday night rehearsal. <laughs> All right. we we are adjourned. Okay. All, right. All right. Take care. Everybody everyone. stay healthy. There's so much COVID out there. Don't get it. Oh Thank God. You. I've already been through it. Yep. yep. Okay. All right. Bye. Okay. Bye.